everybody. Dan Oldman, Mike Beer, the DRF Bets Race of the Day for Saturday, August the 1st, race number nine at Saratoga. It is the grade one, $1 million Whitney going a mile and an eighth on the main track. It is a sensational card at Saratoga. Five stakes races on tap. Get involved with a DRF Bets account. Sign up using the promo code HELLO and start firing away. Here's the field for the Whitney. It's a historically important race and has been through the years won by many of the greats. You can access free formulator pass performances for this race on the Race of the Day event page at DRF.com. Download them, handicap along with us. We'll take the field in post-position order, beginning with the outsider, the number one imperative, and what an outsider. He's banked $3.2 million in his career. He's an old war horse still kicking around at the age of nine. They're taking a shot here. If it doesn't work out, he'll be retired and sent to a good home. Yeah, we'll see what he does here. I mean, he's an easy horse to root for. Um, as you say, over $3 million in earnings. It's not like he's won a bunch of greatest states. I think he's won two Charlestown Classics, and that's it. He's, he's earned his $3 million pretty much the hard way. Um, he missed a lot of time. He came back last summer. He has not been the same horse. Um, he won a race two starts back with an 85 buyer, and he is in way over his head against horses like this at this stage of his career, but he's a very cool horse. Trainer Uriah St. Louis has pulled off his share of upsets in major races. We remember discreet lovers gambits from a couple of years ago. And he has the number two forewarned looking to fill discreet lovers shoes in this year's Whitney. This horse is improving with every start. The problem is his best buyer speed figure of 86 just isn't going to cut this mustard. <laughs> right. Uh, you like seeing horses pair up buyers. He's paired up 86s in his last two. Um, and now we only got to improve, oh, I don't know, 30 or 40 points to win this race. The number three Monongahela would be odds on if he ran at Parks in a stakes race on Saturday. But Jason Service is going to take his chances here. And Monongahela, we always knew him. He was always a bridesmaid and never a bride. So what happened last time out in the Island showing this newfound early speed? Yeah. He blew those horses away to the tune of a 102 buyer speed figure. I need to see it again. I do, too. I mean, it didn't seem like anything had really changed when service took over. He finished second in his first two starts with no real excuse. Um, last time he did show improved positional speed. He ran a career top 102. He won that race very easily. And now he takes on the big boys. I think it's going to be too tough for him, Dan. But he did run the best race of his life most recently. Let's talk about the Timeform U.S. pace projector for the Whitney, because I think it's a bit curious. Timeform U.S. doesn't think this pace will be fast, and I tend to agree. I don't think the pace will be fast. Whether the number four Thunder Snow makes the lead or not, I'm not sure. Maybe Monongahela will be hustled out of there. Maybe Preservationist on the far outside will go. We know that if Thunder Snow wants the lead, he can take it. He was the gate-to-wire winner of the Dubai World Cup back in 2018. His Met Mile was a solid performance especially considering they were probably just prepping him for this longer race. Yeah, they probably were. It's, you know, they, they got him over here to take his shot in the Met Mile. You know, he ran fine in that race. He did have a really good trip on the rail and just was, you know, he just wasn't good enough. He didn't have any real excuse in there. Um, he wound up finishing a good third, I thought. Um, he has plenty of races, obviously, that make him really tough in this race. The distance really helps him. I'm like, I don't think he's going to be on the lead in here. But I think he's going to get a really good trip in this race. You know, he fits really well, Dan. I like some other horses in here more than I like him, but I'm not going to be surprised when he wins. After an even performance in last year's Travers, Todd Pletcher gave the number five Vino Rosso a break. And what I've noticed ever since he's come back as a four-year-old is he has shown a lot more positional and tactical speed. He went out there in the Gold Cup going a mile and a quarter at Santa Anita, and maybe it wasn't the strongest field. We know Gift Box. He's turned into a nice older horse, but we yeah. remember him as an optional claimer in New York. And Lone Sailor was up against it from a pace standpoint. But Vino Rosso is the kind of horse that just looks like he's reaching full maturity and a mile and an eighth is okay with this newfound tactical speed. John Velasquez has options. Yeah, it's good to see uh, him really developing, too, because he felt like that as a three-year-old, didn't he? A little bit of a work in progress. He wouldn't always run his best race, but when he had his mind on business, he was pretty good. Um, he's come back with his mind on business, it looks like, as a four-year-old. I really liked his win last time in the Gold Cup. You know, listen, gift box is what he is. He probably doesn't even want to go that far. So, um, you know, Russell had some things going his way, but he got a wide trip and he proved best in there and he earned a 105 buyer and this distance is great for him. There's a lot to like here. 
The likely favorite in here is the number six, McKinsey, and all he's done is buy her triple digits in, what, seven of his last eight races. Let's talk about his Met Mile, because there was a lot of discussion after that race as to whether he was the best horse or not. Mike Smith found a nice ground-saving spot. He was following Thunder Snow on the back stretch and into the turn. When they swung into the stretch, I wonder if Smith had a case of bias on the brain, because it looked like he could have gotten to the outside in mid-stretch. He decided to try to stay in and split. He steadied hard. He altered course to the inside. McKinsey was running late. A, did that trouble cost him the race? B, how do you think they're going to ride him here? Would you just come out running and maybe make the top? That's what I was thinking when you were talking about the pace projector before. I, I think this horse might go right to the front in this race, and I think it would actually be a really smart thing for them to do. Um, you know, listen, was he best in the Met Mile? Maybe. I mean, there was a real argument to be made that he was going to win that race if he could have gotten clear. But as you um, already alluded to, if he had won, it would have been with a great ride from Smith doing everything right and, and getting over to the good rail and riding it. It just didn't work out. He's a really nice horse. He is the horse to beat in this race, in my opinion. Um, I still have some concerns about how far he wants to go. Yeah. I do think he's a better horse, maybe a mile up to a mile and a 16th. Like a mile and an eighth against the real good horses is real hard for this horse, but he is the horse to beat in here. That's a very, very fair point. I was going to ask you, we know he won the Pennsylvania Derby last year against weaker horses at a mile and an eighth. Yeah. We did see, perhaps his best race was the Malibu, where he came from just way yeah. out of it. Super impressive going seven. I wonder if he's a seven to a mile and a 16th kind of horse. We'll find out. Baffert was really trying to make him into a two-turn longer distance specialist. The number seven is Yoshida, and he's had some magic moments at Saratoga in the past, winning the grade one Woodward last, time, uh, last year with a big late flurry in a race that kind of came apart. Then he ran a surprisingly good fourth in yeah. the Breeders' Cup Classic, another race in which he got a big pace. Pegasus World Cup turf, throw it out. Dubai World Cup, throw it out. Stephen Foster, off the Dubai World Cup, you can throw it out. Yeah. I just don't think this horse gets enough pace in this spot. It's That's the real question, isn't it? I mean, this there, I think there is maybe more speed than it looks on paper, but he's going to need a real big pace, and then he's going to have to run down some real good horses if he's going to win this thing. And I know that you know, he's run once around two turns on dirt at Saratoga with Rosario, and it's his, it's a big grade one win for him. Um, I think this is way tougher, Dan, and I'm not thrilled with his recent form. Let's take a look at our top selections for this year's Whitney. And, Mike, perseverance for preservationist has paid off for Jimmy Jerkins. This is a horse that just had so many injuries, little nagging things that kept him from the races. Heck, he's a six-year-old and he's only started eight times. But when he does run, it seems he fires each and every time. Last time out in the Suburban, he kind of blew Catholic Boy away that day with a very nice trip and ride by Junior Alvarado. And again, he's so tactical. Junior can play the break after breaking from the outside post. That's true. He could do exactly what he did last time, in fact, in the Suburban, because he made the lead in that race. And then when Catholic Boy wanted it, he just let him take it, and he sat in behind. And when he came through on the inside, about the 5 16 pole, he dusted that horse. And listen, there are horses in here who are better than Catholic Boy is, but I like the way the Preservationists did it. I like that he's in recent um, a good form right now. They're getting races, and they're stringing them together, which they could never do. He's 4 for 4 routing on dirt in his career. And what I like more about him than anything, Dan, is along with his tactical speed, his last two races in particular, he really finishes in those races. He's got a big kick through the stretch, and I think he's going to stay on. He's going to see out this distance maybe better um, than a horse like McKenzie will. I think he's very dangerous in here. Well, he is certainly built to handle longer distances. He's a big boy. We saw it last time out at a mile and a quarter, and the price should be okay in this race. So yeah. give me numbers. Yeah, I put preservationist over McKenzie. I'm not way against McKenzie, yeah. Dan, but I have enough against him that I want to try and beat him. Preservationist over McKenzie, Thunder Snow third. Those are the two I want as well. I think McKinsey's going to get through this. I think a mile and an eighth will be within his scope, and he's tactical enough to get the right trip. I also want the now horse preservationist, and my third choice is Thunder Snow. Six, eight, four, five for me in the grade one Whitney, your DRF bet Saturday race of the day. One of five stakes races at the spa on Saturday. Play them all with a DRF bets account. All you got to do to sign up is use the promo code Hello. Approximate post time for the Whitney, 546 Eastern. Best of luck.